Hi, this is Derek here doing a review for HorrorNerds.com on the movie The Exorcist. You all know it and love it. It's one of those great classics that many have argued and have even put into print as the scariest movie of all time. I feel so honored to be doing a review in this sense, even on my own, for such a great film simply because it is one of my all-time favorite flicks, especially in the horror genre. Released in 1973 uh, from a uh, adapted screenplay, I believe, by... Um, William Peter Blatty, who also wrote the novel, and directed by William Friedkin, released by Warner Brothers, and it was uh, based off, of course, the novel, the same name, uh, inspired by the 1949 exorcism case of Roland Doe, but who cares about that? What really is important to talk about here is the fact that this movie works on so many different levels, complete with the incorrectly titled subliminal Im imagery that is in the film, namely all the back shots of, you know, people in white ghost makeup and so on, which, you know, by the very definition of subliminal, if you can see it, it ain't subliminal, um, to the fact that you are dealing uh, with a film that was put out in a very interesting time in American film history where we were starting to see more and more of the gore variety getting exposure, so much so that this was even nominated for Best Movie uh, in an Oscar. It's the first time at that moment in history that a horror movie was nominated for such a prestigious award. And um, it's part of this whole the whole cycle of, of demon child movies that were coming out at that time. You know, if you could remember back to your movie film history, things like Rosemary's Baby and The Omen were being released, all dealing with children possessed by the devil or dealing with the devil in some way and it's to much credit uh, of William Friedkin and William Peter Blatty, they create a sense of occultism, and, and it's a certain je ne sais quoi. I can't put a finger on it, except that the, the movie broods with atmosphere. Everything from the Georgetown-style um, religious backdrop, I mean, the college, to the, you know, the, the harsh criticisms uh, drawn by, you know, Father Karras, you know, who certainly uh, did not want to believe in, you know, what he was seeing, you know, with Reagan, um, even to the mom having the typical reaction of any mom, you know, would have if you were told their, mother, their kids going crazy. And then on top of that, um, you, you know, the, the end result of everything that was done to find out what was going on with her uh, turned out to be the devil. Uh, why did they just think of that in the first place, right? Um you know, even the introduction of the very old priest Father Marin was was creepy, since he, in a sense, was the reason somehow of bringing this demonic possession back from Iraq, which, you know, in this day and age, unfortunately, you think of Iraq, you only think of one thing as an American, but we won't go into that. Well, what I will say is that it works. It just works. Um, it, yes, it's it's been so widely imitated and you know, made fun of and characterized in, in all forms and shades of pop culture that, you know, hearing Reagan talking about, you know, the vulgar and obscene things that she does in this film almost comes across as hysterically amusing. But if you set your preconceived notions of what the film is um, based on all these years of pop culture treatment to it, and you just you kind of let it take you, you know, I, I recommend watching it at 3 o'clock in the morning with all the lights out and nobody home, and preferably in the month of October, just because anything in October is scary. Uh, you're going to find that this movie will get you. It will freak you out because you keep asking yourself, what if? You know, what What? What are the chances that something like this could happen? And, you know, with Father Car Karras being the, the doubting Thomas of of the role, which very much all of us would, would take that role, I am assuming, unless, of course, you are extremely religious and believe in the devil, um, you know, he comes at this, and by the end, even he's a believer, and he loses his life because of that belief, you know, and it, it, it is a scary idea to think that this poor girl, Reagan, was, for no reason at all, possessed by the devil. She had no no concern other than perhaps suffering through uh, a painful separation process between her mother and her father, who, you know, we don't really see in the film. So... You know, she, yeah, she was emotionally depressed, but if that is the reasoning for possession, then Jesus, um, we're all going to get possessed uh, in America with, you know, over 50% of all marriages ending in divorce. So I think that 
you know, when you look at the movie just on the fringe surface level, um, everything was put in place. And despite the manic production and all the cursing uh, that, that supposedly surrounded the film and all of its people in it, at the end of the day, it's just one damn good scary film that really makes you think and the sequels certainly haven't touched it all movies that have come after it it is damned to holding up to a level of standard that they can never reach just because just the film was so grainy so 1970 ish and and the quality of it the idea of it just the fact that you know this girl could could be so infused with something so sinister you know I mean, for my money, it's it's always going to be there in my head. It'll never leave me, especially the part where, you know, Father Karras sees uh, the help me written on Reagan's stomach. Truly creepy. And um, even to this day and age, the music that you hear, um, you know, when the um, one character's walking down the sidewalk, the the do 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 do, you know, the very the very famous little clip there um, that gets overshadowed a lot by Penderecki and Jack, you know, Nietzsche's you know scores um, that is used extensively throughout the film. I think that. You know, it's something that you'll always, you know, have. Whether it's going to be a ringtone for you or it's going to be something that the minute you hear will instantly trigger cues of, uh, you know, shivers. You'll know it's because of The Exorcist. And this world is such a great place for having such a great scary movie because it reminds you of the possibility of the unknown, which this movie just exploits mercilessly. I love it. It's great. Go watch it. Go check it out. Like I said, um, make sure you're alone or with somebody you deeply love that can also be scared and won't be a doubting Thomas too much and um enjoy it one more time it's great go check out this movie and this is your review for horror check out all the other great reviews here at horror nerds and hopefully we'll be talking to you thanks